welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar and this is the first course as is our practice we begin with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेह योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संचरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेह योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संचरी हर्ति लीलया This Mangala Charana is the Mangala Charana of a very celebrated text in the Paninian grammatical tradition, known as Shabda Kaustubha. And my reverend teacher, who read with us Anhikas of Shabda Kaustubha, used to recite this Mangala Charana. at the beginning of every such lecture in his memory i recite this particular mangala charana at the beginning of my own sanskrit lectures and such lectures we were dealing with the question what is samartha and we saw that there are two meanings offered samartha meaning capable of capable of what capable of conveying the meaning thereby assuming that the group of words which are interrelated they convey the meaning and then capable of conveying this meaning by merging such interrelated interlinked words in the sentence we also saw that samartha also means having the same meaning samaha arthah the independent words which convey meanings independently when they get merged together they convey the same meaning this relation between the merged output and the separate independent input is the hallmark of this second explanation of samartha we have already noticed that samartha meaning capable of means capable of expressing the interconnected meanings and the word unit is capable of expressing the interconnected meanings only when it becomes a pada a pratipadika is not samartha as it cannot express the interconnected meanings on its own without the pratyaya getting added to it so a pratipadika with an addition of a pratyaya becomes a pad and then it becomes samartha then it becomes capable of expressing the interconnected meanings so it has to be a pad that is a subanta or also a tinganta which is capable of expressing the interconnected meanings 
we also already saw that the caracals which play a very significant role as far as the sentence construction in sanskrit is concerned they get expressed by the respective vibhaktis these vibhaktis are added to respective pratipadikas these pratipadikas and their meanings they are related to the meanings of the verbal root so there is the interconnectivity interlinkage between the subanta and tinganta we said that there is this capability but the point is that the speaker of sanskrit has not thought of converting this capability into a merged output unit where the second meaning of samartha would also be tested this is the feature of the desire to speak of the sanskrit speaker however we also note that there are some other forms where words which are otherwise termed as pratipadika they are interrelated with the verbal roots and they jointly denote the meaning sakshat karoti and so on but these are accounted for in a different manner by paninian grammar we also said that the karakas in a sentence like ramaha prayagat yanena kartika mase pujanaya kashim gachati in a sentence like this ramaha prayagat yanena kartika mase and pujanaya all of them they can be said to be related with the action of going denoted by the verbal root gama and also kashi but this semantic interrelation has not produced any compounded output as we said just now similarly ramaha and prayagat prayagat and yanena and so on and so forth all these words they are also directly not related so they are also not samartha so then what is samartha so we saw two instances where there is semantic relatedness and still they are not called samartha so the question is what is samartha and here is the first answer now if we add something more to the already existing sentence ramaha prayagat yanena kartika mase pujanaya kashim gachati if we add some other elements for example ramaha prayagat nirgatah yanena prapitah samagate kartika mase devasya pujanaay kashim gachati what this means is rama who went out of prayag prayagat nirgatah being dropped by the car yanen prapitah in the arrived month of the kartika samagate kartika mase goes to kashi kashim gachati for the worship of god devasya pujanaya we read the meaning again ram who went out of prayag prayagat nirgatah being dropped by the car yanena prapitah 
in the arrived month of kartika samagate kartika mase goes to kashi kashi mrachati for the worship of god devasya pujanaya now in this sentence the words nirgata prapita samagata and pujana these are added words and these are derived from the verbal roots gama to go apa to reach gama to go again and puja to worship respectively and in deriving these words nirgata prapita samagata the suffix ta is added to the verbal roots gama and apa and in order to derive pujana we have added the suffix ana to the verbal root puja so the internal structure of these words can be shown in the following manner nirgata can be said to have nir as one unit and gama plus ta as the other unit nir as one unit and gama plus ta as the second unit similarly pra as one unit and apa plus ta as the second unit then sam plus a plus gama plus ta this is the structure of samagata and finally puja plus ana is the structure of pujana anir pra sam and a these are independent words also known as upasarga or gati and are treated as separate words and that is why they are put in separate brackets now the suffix ta and ana which are added in these four words they are termed krit by kridating 3193 and these words are called kridanta words nirgata prapita samagata and pujana these are the kridanta words as far as the word prapita is concerned there is also an additional augment element which is not indicated over here but these are the suffixes that are mentioned now these kridantas nirgata prapita samagata and pujana they become nominal roots or pratipadikas by definition by 1246 which says krit tadhit samasascha arthavat adhatuh apratyaya pratipadikam this is 1245 defining what is a pratipadika and in 1246 there is an additional statement defining pratipadika which is krit tadhit and samasas krit tadhit samasascha so these words become pratipadikas and once they become pratipadikas in order that they be used in a sentence they will need to be added with the suffix sub after them and after we add sub suffix after each one of them they will eventually become subantas thus we can say that they have peculiar characteristics semantically they denote an action and formally they are nominal roots thus they retain both features denoting action involving karakas and getting interlinked with other meanings and words that is one 
and then the second one also be subantas. These two features, such words retain theoretically in Paninian grammar. So now we can show the entire sentence in the form of the division in the Prakriti and the Pratyaya format. So we have Ramaha written as Rama plus Su. This is the Prathama Ekavachana Pratyaya added to the Pratipadika Rama. Yana plus Ta. Ta is the instrumental singular suffix. And Prapita plus Su. Now this is a Pratipadika, so Su will be added to it. Then we have Deva plus Nas and Puja plus Ana. And Puja plus Ana will also have the Chaturthi namely Ange added to it. Then we have Prayaga plus Nasi, the Panchami Ekapachana Pratyaya, plus Nir plus Gama plus Ta plus Su. Nirgata is the Pratipadika. Pujana is the Pratipadika. Then we have sum plus a plus gamma plus the followed by ni which is a sub suffix and then kartika masa plus ni as the other word. Then we have kashi plus am and finally we have gamma plus ti. Now these words are samartha now because they have become Subantas. And so these words become eligible for becoming an input to the process of compounding. And as a result, we can get Ramaha Prayaga Nirgataha Yana Prapitaha Samagata Kartika Masi Deva Pujanaya Kashim Gachati. So now we generated four compounds in the same sentence following the semantic interrelatedness between a pair of words. And we have four such pairs Prayagat Nirgataha, Yanena Prapitaha, Samagate Kartikamase, Devasya Pujanaya. So there are these four compounds that are generated. After they get generated, you see that they are embedded within the basic skeleton, basic structure, Ramaha Kashim Gachati, which is constant. So these compounds become part of the sentence. Prayaga Nirgataha and yana prapitaha they become the qualifieds qualifiers of ramaha which is a qualified and then samagata kartika masi becomes the adhikarana and deva pujanaya is retaining its own status of sampradana and then we have this particular sentence now the second meaning of samartha also comes into play. The compound prayaga nirgata is capable of explaining or expressing the same meaning as was expressed by prayagat nirgataha. Yanena prapitaha was explaining and expressing some meaning. Now yana prapitaha also expresses the same meaning. Same is the case with Samagata Kartika Masi and also Deva Ujana. They all express the same meaning which the separated independent constituent words 
independently expressed. In this way, the interpretations of Samartha in two manners, they get applied and they can be explained further. Now we go to the second answer of what is Samartha. In the first answer, we saw that the verbal root together with the krit suffix does become Samartha and does become eligible for the process of compounding. The verbal root with thing suffix, even though semantically related, does not become eligible for the process of compounding. Now let us look at the second instance where the meaning of the Samartha will be explained. Now we have Raja Ramaha Mahataha Prayagat Gati Mata Yanena Shite Kartika Mase Varshikaya Deva Pujanaya Pavitram Kashim Gachati. Now, if you observe, we have added one word in addition to each word playing one role. Ramaha and we have added Raja. Prayagat, we have added Mahataha. Yanena, we have added Gatimata. Kartikamase, we have added Shite. Deva Pujanaya, we have added Varshikaya and Kashim, we have added Pavitram. So these are all the qualifiers or adjectives of the different words already used, already present in the sentence. What this sentence means is the following. King Rama from the great Prayaga, by the speedy car, in the cold month of Kartika, goes to sacred Kashi for the annual worship of God. King Rama, that is Raja Ramaha, from the great Prayaga, Mahataha Prayagat, by the speedy car, Gatimata Yanena, in the cold month of Kartika, Shite Kartika Mase, goes to Gachati, sacred Kashi, Pavitram Kashim, for the annual worship of God, Varshikaya Deva Pujanaya. So in this case we have Raja Ramaha, Mahataha Prayagat, Gatimata Yanena, Shite Kartika Mase, Varshikaya Deva Pujanaya, Pavitram Kashim and Gachati. All these different characters and their qualifiers, they are presented in different colors for specific purpose. Raja qualifies Ramaha in Raja Ramaha. Mahataha qualifies Prayagat in Mahata Prayagat. Gatimata qualifies Yanena in Gatimata Yanena. Shite qualifies Kartika Mase in Shite Kartika Mase. Varshikaya qualifies Deva Pujanaya in Varshikaya Deva Pujanaya. And Pavitram qualifies Kashim in Pavitram Kashim. Finally, we have Gachati, which indicates the action of going, which happens in the present tense. Now these words and their qualifiers can be shown once again in the form of the Prakriti and Pratyaya Vibhaga. So we have Rajan plus Su plus Rama plus Su and we have Mahat plus Nasi plus Prayaga plus Nasi and you notice that the Vibhakti Pratyayas at the end of each Pratipadika they are same in the pairs. 
सो so, महत प्लस नसी प्रयाग प्लस नसी रतिमत प्लस टा प्लस यान प्लस टा शीत प्लस मे प्लस कार्तिक मास प्लस मे वार्षिक प्लस मे प्लस देवपूजन प्लस मे पवित्र प्लस पवित्रा प्लस अम एंड काशी प्लस अम नाउ यू सी देर इज दिस ब्लैक स्क्वेर ब्रैकेट हियर एंड राइट स्क्वेर ब्रैकेट ओवर हियर to indicate that this is one unit one sentence now meanings with qualified qualifier relation they are interlinked and so we can say that they are samarthas that is the bottom line and so they become eligible to be compounded and then we have the same sentence written in the following compounded manner rajaramah mahaprayagat gatimat yanena shita kartika mase varshika deva pujanaya pavitra kashim and gachati i repeat rajaramah mahaprayagat gatimat yanena shita kartika mase varshika deva pujanaya pavitra kashim and gachati now as you see there are some modifications happening in the first part of the compound initial member of the compound also known as purva pad so we have rajaramah over here and pavitra kashim over here and mahaprayagat over here where the purva pad has undergone some change so this is part of the process of compounding where a qualifier gets compounded with the qualified so this is the second explanation of what is samartha a qualifier is interlinked with the qualified and then it is also capable of expressing the interrelation and also the compounded form conveys the same meaning as the separate independent words in the sentence would convey so both the interpretations of the word samartha are applied and the pairs of qualifier and qualified they become samartha and so they get compounded and we shall study this feature and this type in detail when we study the karma dharaya compound later on in this particular course now the third explanation of what is samartha is the following so we take the sentence dasharathasya putrasya ramasya hastasya alankaram namami dasharathasya putrasya ramasya hastasya alankaram namami there are four words in shashti vibhakti what this sentence means is the following i salute the ornament alankaram of the hand hastasya of rama ramasya the son of putrasya dasharathasya the son of dasharatha so here we have dasharathasya linked with putrasya putrasya linked with ramasya ramasya linked with hastasya and hastasya linked with alankara in different different semantic relation dasharathasya and putrasya there is a link of janya janaka bhav dasharatha being the janaka and putra the janya putrasya and ramasya have visheshana visheshya bhav qualifier qualified relationship ramasya and hastasya have avayava avayavi bhav rama is the avayavi and hasta is the avayava and hastasya alankaram we have swaswami bhav where hasta is the swami and alankara is the swa these are the different relations expressed by the shashti vibhakti 
And so we have this particular kind of format that can be presented in which it is visible that all the pratyayas, they are shashti pratyayas and except one where we have alankara plus am and namami which is the verb. In this context, meanings of dasharatha, putra, rama, hasta and alankara are interlinked through the suffixes and hence they become samartha and so they become eligible to be compounded. So we can have dasharatha putra rama hasta alankaram namami. Dasharatha putra rama hasta alankaram, this can be a compound. It is indeed a compound and you can have multiple members that can be added to the same compound if the meanings are shown to be interrelated. So this is an observation. Meanings of kridantas and interlinked karakas, meanings of qualifier and qualified relations, meanings of various relations denoted by the sixth case, Shashti Vibhakti, are samartha and are eligible for undergoing the process of compounding or samasa in Sanskrit. The other pairs, other combinations, sometimes you can say that they are semantically linked, but still they are not accepted eligible for undergoing the process of compounding. The Subanta and Tingantas, which are interlinked, they are not eligible for the process of compounding. In conclusion, we can say that the process of compounding or Samasa is based on Samartha theory. Samartha theory is based on the Karaka theory by default thus embedded in the sentential structure with sentence as an input and nominal root as primary output and sentence as eventual output. So, Vakyad Vakyam Samasanam is an apt sutra to capture this entire process of compounding. These are the texts that are referred to. These are the traditional sources that we constantly refer to. And the Samarthanika of the Vyakarana Mahabhashya will be heavily relied and referred to in the next lecture. Thank you very much.